Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Rockman Power Hour, our first episode of 2023. And uh, what's going on, Ryan? How you doing? <laughs> I uh, unintentionally jumped in, but now I'm jumping at the chance to wish you a happy new year. <laughs> that was really, you came in there like really quick. <laughs> I was I know. like, oh, hi. <laughs> uh, coming quick is an old yeah, habit. Just, just leave, it, <laughs> leave it, leave it, leave it alone. Just leave it there. Yeah. Leave it. Um, happy New Year! <laughs> happy New Year! How was your uh, How was your uh, holidays? Well, I saw you a couple of times over the holidays. We got to celebrate a few times together. Sweaters were worn. Sweaters were worn and uh, given. Be- beverages were drunk. I yes. have a little sweater you got me. Yeah, so I I, I ordered that for you, from you for you from the UK from this website called Zavi. I'm not going to give them a plug, but um, and uh, I saw that and I was like, oh, that because I know you like Christmas sweaters. You love yes. Christmas stuff in general. I do. And uh, when I saw that, I was like, okay, that has to, that you have to get that. So, <laughs> um, and you gave me a bunch of stuff too. All your, so all the Christmas stuff that you got me, cause you got me a bunch of Christmas sweaters are all hermetically sealed and back put away until next year already. We we like, we tear shit down the next day. That is serious, man. You're like a boxing day Grinch. Jesus. <laughs> we, we, I, I am a boxing day Grinch. I, I, when I'm like, I love Christmas is okay. I don't want to say I love Christmas as much as you, but. I am a Christmas enthusiast, as you are, mm. right? Yeah. And, oh, well, uh, big, well, big time. I like after Christmas is done, I lay in it like a hangover, just you know, <laughs> reminiscing of the night before and the pain I'm in because of it. And yeah. uh, you know, you're the next day. You're just like Christmas is a one night stand. You're like, get out of, get out That's of right. here, get out of my bed. I don't know you. Why did I bring you <laughs> home? But you, like, you looked really hot the night before. That's how Christmas is for me a bit. No, it's not true. But I, I do, I do love the holidays. I love leading up to Christmas. Like for me, the sweet spots probably be about two weeks before when I really get into the spirit. This year, mm. it was really nice because this year we had that nice snowfall right before. It really felt like a, a movie Christmas at one yeah. point. Because you know the way we he really literally had a white Christmas. It was it was really really nice. But yeah, no. So you gave me some really really cool. Christmas sweaters. You gave me a, a, an amazing elf one. We probably have, you, you know, that photo that we took of you, me and Julia. Yeah. Let's show everybody that photo. Yeah. Throw right, that there photo. You up. There yeah. you go. You can see it. So there you go. You see us for, from Christmas Eve or no Christmas Eve, but from our, our Christmas party that we did with some of our friends. And you can see that that is the beautiful elf Christmas sweater that Ryan got me as well as you got me a pink Floyd one, which is really cool. And a nice Snoopy, uh, Charlie Brown cardigan. So you really spoiled me this year. Thank you. I appreciate it. I did, but uh, you know, it kind of trickles into your birthday, which was a few days ago. Exactly. So you gave, you did the, 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 the classic, uh, this is for your birthday and for Christmas, which is it's, great. Your whole life must have been about that. Right. Like all, that, all, that's all it was. My did your out. parents ever like do the thing? Cause I'm a spoiled child. Right. And they got yeah. about five months to conveniently forget about the amount of spendage they did in December when April yeah. rolls around. But you yeah. uh, you have m- mere days. Be- yeah, yeah, I, I, I always, it was always the, my birthday traditionally was always, especially growing up in, and in school, it was, mm-hmm. oh yeah, this is the first day back at school. Like January okay. 3rd is the first day back at school 90% of the time. You know, it's like we're back January 3rd or January, you know, and people are always in a bad mood or people are like, oh yeah. Or like try to have a birthday party like after Christmas, like no one, it was just always that, but it's okay because I got sober 30 years ago in the summer. So now I have something that gets celebrated in the summer as long as I stay sober. Um, so I've got that, which is six months apart. So I've always looked at it as like, oh, that's kind of nice. Like I sobered up July 25th in 92. So I have that to celebrate every year. As long as I don't get fucked up. <laughs> On a hot summer day, you decided to dry out. I like it. Exactly. I, at one point, I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, you need to celebrate in the summer because you've gotten fucked for your entire life on your birthday. So here you go. And at 21, I made a decision. I didn't even drink that much, but I said, let's have something to celebrate. <laughs> no, just kidding. I tend to enjoy getting fucked on my birthday, but uh, you know, <laughs> to each their own. 
Well, I like getting fucked on my birthday, <laughs> but I just like remembering it. Anyways, let that's it's really going in a weird spot. I wanted to show off. I wanted. Okay, there's a couple of things I want to talk about before we okay. jump into this week's guest. Um, first off, I wanted to uh, I wanted to show off a couple of things that I got for Christmas that are notable that I really really enjoy. So that um, aren't that aren't sealed in carbonite. Sealed. So yeah. I got that light behind me. I like it. I got that from my kids and from my ex. Oh. Yeah, they got me that, which is really cool. So I'm going to eventually try to mount that, and it lights up. So I thought that was really nice. It was a really thoughtful gift. Um, my buddy Nick in California, you know I'm a big Steely Dan fan, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he got me this hat, which if you're into <laughs> Steely Dan, <laughs> it's a it's an, a Steely Dan album called Katie Lied, and he found this for me, and, and he sent me this. So I got that, which was really cool. And then my friend Ron English and his family sent me this for Christmas. Oh. Mona Lisa Grin. So my you know... Goodness. Isn't, isn't that nice? And it's yeah. In the back. So, um, yeah. And then my gift to myself this holiday season, I got tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> I figured oh, you're my birthday gift to my season because everybody gives me a – now I feel bad, Dave. Now I'm going to get you an independent birthday gift. No, I'm not saying – no, 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 no. He's a very good sober gift. You, get, you gave me all, you, you give me all kinds of great gifts all the time. But So I wanted to talk about that. I wanted okay. to show some of those presents who so were really cool. Um, and then I wanted to talk about the gift that our podcast got for Christmas, which we're showing off for the first time. We're sponsored by AKG now. All the audio that you're going to hear through, um, through from now on, anything you hear on the Rockland Power Hour pro- on our end, because we can't always speak for our guests unless they're with us, which might happen in the future. We are powered by AKG. Yes. And uh, it's, I, I feel smooth in a way yeah. that only cream usually can uh, can do. So yeah, the, uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, but I mean, we, we, we want to thank AKG. We really, really do. Um, they're, they're sponsoring the podcast. They set us up with some great, um, headphones and some great microphones and, um, and I'm really, really excited to welcome them. So, um, big shout out to AKG, a big shout out to, uh, my friend shy from H1 media, um, in California who, who uh, did the connect for us, who actually also animated and, and created our intro for us. For the podcast. Uh, is there nothing this shy guy can't do? Shy's I pretty mean, amazing, dude. He's a pretty amazing dude. And he's not shy about it. I mean, he's seriously. not shy about being. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. Shy. As, as much as your birthday pisses you off, I'm sure that pun pisses him off even more. So shy, oh, he, you're yeah. out there. I, I am sorry for taking such low bearing fruit. I apologize with this. Well, and, uh, and, and yeah. when he calls my ringtone is Kajagugu shy, shy. You're too shy, shy. Hush, yeah, that's hush, awesome. Shy, do I. Right. There you go. That turned around right there. There's no cool songs with Ryan in it. <laughs> I'm just like the least interesting Canadian Ryan out there. Even a serial Joe guy is more interesting than me. <laughs> there <laughs> there's is a long, there's a long there's, list of Canadian blondish Ryans who like you know take this hierarchy of better than you ism, and it's uh you know if my if I was named Brent, there's only a few Brents out there. You know, there's Brent Spiner, which is awesome, but yeah. seriously, Ryan Gosling, Reynolds, even yeah. Ryan George from Pitch Meeting. I mean, seriously, there's not Ryan there's Adams. Ryans. Ryan Adams. Not yeah, Brian Ryan Adams. Ryan Adams. Great Ryan singer. Adams. Jesus. Uh, yeah. All right. So, so thanks to AKG for jumping on board. If you want to check out any of their stuff, I mean, we're, we're using right now the, uh, the K seven Oh twos, which are the, uh, the headphones that we use and, uh, and these microphones, which are the, uh, the, the C two fourteens, which all of my audio friends, my audio file buddies, um, all of my studio nerds, like Kevin, um, from uplift and and all my studio friends the minute i told them what we were using um two fourteens, they're like whoa uh so thank you akg for being on board we really really appreciate you and of course um our main sponsor for this podcast we cannot forget them they are the heartbeat of the rockman power hour literally heartbeat hot sauce um thank you so much they've been with us for a little over a year now we absolutely love them and uh there's a Big, big possibility in 2023, we're going to be uh, meeting the guys and, and doing some stuff with them in Thunder Bay. So let's hope that materializes. I just wanted to show you some of their um, incredible sauces that we've been using forever. Um, my birthday my birthday dinner was, um, we. I asked Julia if she could make Mexican, and we had all of these on the table when all the family was eating burritos and, uh, and jambalaya and stuff. And man, they were just going down. I was just watching my heartbeat hot sauce stash go down. But, um, if you want to, um, enjoy heartbeat hot sauce and you've never tried it before, uh, check out my promo code below rockman 20, and that'll get you 20% off your entire order. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Heartbeat and studio house designs, Ryan, you're wearing the hacker shirt. I am wearing the hacker shirt. And, uh, just to say, 
I'm, I'm feeling good wearing this hacker shirt and all, especially I love the details they put in the arms. Yeah, the sleeves you know? are great. Yeah. And uh, my new camera angle is specifically made so you can actually see the shirts I'm wearing instead of holding it up in front of my face like a face mask. <laughs> but, <laughs> I love it. But, I love it. But uh, I got to say, Studio House Designs waits for no man or woman. Yeah. And uh, during when we were working Winnipeg Comic Con, it had slipped my mind to, uh, to uh, put my order in for the Casper right. shirt right. that you're wearing right now. And um, I am literally, no pun intended, dead inside that I don't have a Casper shirt. And you do. So uh, everybody out there, when you see something on social media, especially from Studio House Designs, make sure you order. When it says 24 hours only, they mean it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. you know, do not do not take their generosity for granted. Even though, you know, Jason and I are kind of connected, uh, it doesn't matter. The no. details yeah. have gone to the printers, and uh, so have my... Uh, so, Someday, maybe I will acquire a Casper shirt. I'm sure but, you'll get a Casper shirt. Look, if you really, really want a Casper shirt, I'll give you this one. No, I, I just it's might. I might pry it off your dead body after I kill you for it. I, <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not sure, Jason. Oh, uh, I just realized, too, very quickly, a uh, big shout out for another Christmas gift that I got because um, I'm wearing mm. them right now. My wife, Julia, got me these. You know how much I love Ron English. We already talked Where were you this. hiding that? Jesus. <laughs> these are on my feet. These are the new collab that Ron did with Crocs. And I never thought I would wear a pair of Crocs, but these are awesome. And uh, Those Crocs rock. They, they really do. And they're comfortable. So um, I wanted to just give these a big shout out to Julia, our producer, and also my, um, my partner in life. I hate calling my wife my partner. I'm sorry. Me, I, I, me too. She's not my partner. She's my wife. Um, and this is, <laughs> she is my life partner. Okay, mm. I got goofy again. Anyways, these are my uh, my Ron English Crocs, which you can get now at Foot Locker. Mm. I, I don't call Melissa. Comfy. I don't call Melissa my partner in life. I call her my uh, my lady friend with questionable taste in men. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's jump to this week's interview. Um, very very excited to have this guy on the podcast, uh, Ryan. If you uh, you know w- the one thing that I like about Shannon Larkin is the fact that Shannon Larkin has done everything in rock and roll. Um, and he's such a respected drummer. Not only is he one of the flashiest, most, he's the funnest drummer to watch play. He really, really is. And he's the guy that set the template and set the, the mold for so many modern drummers that you see today. Um, you know, you watch a guy like Morgan from seven dust. He's got a really, really interesting style. Uh, I've seen so many drummers that emulate what Shannon Larkin does. Because Shannon Larkin is just a complete badass. And um, I have a personal connection to him. We, we, we have a bit of, of history, if you will. Not too much, but we have a bit of history. And, uh, and he's a very, very amazing human, amazing drummer. And when he got the gig in Godsmack, I couldn't have been happier for him. Because I knew it was going to be a steady gig. I knew it was going to yeah. be a secure gig for him. And, um, you know, Godsmack, one of the biggest modern rock bands of the last 20, 30 years. I mean, they're massive. And... Um, and it was a good gig. I mean, he it, he's he he fit in there like a like a glove, and um, he brought the band to another level. And he's just, I mean, Sully from Godsmack is an accomplished drummer is in, in his own right. He's a very very good drummer, but but Shannon is that next level. He's like Tommy Lee status when it comes to drumming. So uh, to see him in Godsmack over the last, you know, it's probably been about fifteen years now. It nothing could make me happier, and to get a chance to chat with him was exciting. Also because he was the drummer in one of my all time favorite punk bands. Amen. Okay. And, uh, amen are, you would love amen. And I got to see amen play their, their flame burnt very, f- very bright, but very fast. And, okay. um, they were a complete, they were a disaster when you, when you look at it. Uh, I mean, the band was, there was inner turmoil. There was, uh, their singer was just off the rails. Um, but they had that, thing that a band like the sex pistol ha- has like you know those bands that burn so bright but for such a short period of time and there's just so much energy in the band that it just can't contain itself that's what happened to amen and they kind of imploded um and one in the guitar player in amen uh sunny is a, is a good friend of mine i love the first amen record um mm. this one here it was produced by ross robinson who produced corn Deftones, Limp Bizkit, um, Sepultura, like he was the producer of the time. And this project, Amen, um, that came out on Roadrunner Records, this record is just incredible, incredible record. So it was funny because when I'm talking to Shannon, we're discussing Godsmack, but I laid in hard on Amen. <laughs> so um, 
And and you would love Amen. You really, really would. And if you look at old footage of them playing, man, um, their lead singer Casey Chaos was just he was something else. And um, their the, old footage of them playing together is is really, really worth watching. Everybody in that band went on to do some really, really great things. Like Shannon, he went on to, you know, to be in Godsmack. Um, Sonny Mayo went on to play with a ton of other bands. Um, Seven Dust, Head PE, uh, Ugly Kid Joe. He's doing some great work with Rock to Recovery. Um, and uh, Paul Fig, who played in that band as well. He, he's worked on a lot of stuff. And he worked on uh, Jerry Cantrell's last solo album. Um, there's just some great, great musicians that came out of that band. And uh, it's just really fun to see his eyes kind of light up when I bring up a man, because I don't think anybody does. No, oh, that's you know? rad, man. And he was also in wrath child America and he's been a bunch of bands, but, um, and he also has a connection to somebody I know, but I, I don't want to give anything away. Let's just people watch this. Um, I've blabbed enough, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Welcome back to the rock and power hour. And here is our first guest of 2023, Shannon Larkin of Godsmack. Hey, man. Good to see you. How are you? I'm good, Jason. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. So I'm going to give you a bit of um, context of how I've known you for almost 30 years. So I used to be friends with a guy named Ilan Rakels from Montreal. Ilan. I love Ilan. I love and, Ilan. I know. And I, so I was in a band with Kevin called Slaves on Dope. And we've played together many times when you were in this band. <laughs> so you were, on, you were in Slaves on Dope. What, uh, what did you I was play? A, I was a singer. Yeah. <laughs> You sing! Oh my yeah. gosh! Yeah. Wow. So, so Sonny Mayo is one of my one of my good good friends, and um and uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to you formally since I started working in media. I've been radio host for like thirteen years, and um and I'm really really excited that we can actually talk professionally about all your achievements because, dude, your career has been insane. Okay, and being being someone who's kind of followed it from the early stages to now you finding your place in Godsmack. I mean, it's just been so much fun to watch. Well, thank you. I mean, you know, it's, it's been a trip to live too. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, you know, all those ups and downs. And I was just saying, you know, I started playing clubs when I was 13 and I never worked a real job, never worked a job period. Uh, I mean, not that our job isn't work. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, Jason, yeah. it's work, but, uh, and then to get in Godsmack, you know, after the amen years, especially, you know, uh, which were, you know, as you know, it was, you know, brutal punk rock. Uh, and we were, we played clubs, you know what I mean? Forever and all over the world clubs. And, uh, it was tough, tough life. And I was partying way, 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 way too much. We all did, you know, and it was a different time. And when I finally made the decision with Sonny Mayo that we were going to leave that band, uh, not because of Casey or, fig or any, any tumor it was it was all just both of us were just we felt like we didn't want to be punk rock anymore man <laughs> like we i i was married and i was having my first kid and all this yeah. and so that's you know and it literally two weeks after i quit amen sully called and said hey you know we're, we're 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 thinking about getting rid of tommy i'm like well you call me when you get rid of tommy <laughs> you know <laughs> And uh, he's like, well, you know, I'm like, I'm not going to do that kind of crap. And so he's like, all right, I got you. I got you. And then he called me like a week later. We got, I got rid of Tommy. You coming to Boston? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, it all, it all changed. that was 20 years ago. Dude. I know. It's, and it, years. It, it's crazy because in my mind, you know, I mean, I know time goes really, really quickly, but in my mind, it, it still seems like you, you know, you just joined the band, but you've been there for, this is the longest place you've actually laid your hat for um, ever in your career. It's nuts. Yeah. I mean, Wrathchild was a long run, you know, 16 years with them. And many of them unsigned, though, of course, you know. Yeah, man. I mean, it's been uh, it's been crazy, dude. I And I, I got to say that, you know, after all the years, it's it just got better and better and better yeah. as far as like, you know, we all have. I've been sober now for God over six and a half years. And, nice. you know, uh, everybody in the band is finally just like friends real friends you know and it's like we're we're we we love one another like brothers and it wasn't always like that you know and um and so it's we had a great run and it's not over you know i'm sure the question you know it's been i've done a few interviews i'm doing the interviews i always do the interviews for this band always have yeah because we don't like the swamp we don't want to swamp the genius he's got to write hits yeah right well that's what it would be <laughs> 
but anyway, man, um, yeah, so the whole cycle touring thing is all we're going to quit, really, making records and cycle touring. But we're going to stay together as a band. We're going to come to Canada, by the way, and we're going to play shows. And so it's going to be the same old song and dance, except for we won't be a slave to a product that we have to sell. We don't need to do that anymore. We're on our mid-50s and older, dude. So you know what I mean? It's it's. Uh, I like to get that out of the way right away, that we're not breaking up. And so he said, the, the, you know, he, he's the genius. It was his idea. The, the beautiful thing about it is, is after we're done this record and we do this cycle tour, which means we have something to sell, we have something to support. We have we'll let people down if it doesn't sell. So we will go on tour for two years and work our ass off and sell this record. Right. But after that, he's like, we'll do what we always do. We'll take a year off. But instead of me calling and say, all right, guys, let's get together and write and record a new record and a two year tour. I'll call and say, all right, guys. How long y'all want to go out for? A couple weeks. And we'll go out for a couple weeks and do festivals in the summer. How's that sound? We'll come to Canada and play for a, a week up there or something. You know, these are the kind of things that make me excited, Jason. Yeah. Because here it is, man. You know, I'm 55, you know, and I'm not that old guy. I don't, I, in fact, I don't expect to grow old or look old. Right. But it, it's life, man. And so well, yeah, it's going it, to happen. It, it, it catches up with you. And um, and at the end of the day, I, I, it sounds like you found a great place with working conditions that are favorable and and everybody's on the same page. And I mean, what else could you ask for? You know, and, and, it's, and I think what's nice about Godsmack is that the band's reached a certain point where they can choose what they want to do. They're not a slave to, you know, the rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, the repeat. Machine. Yeah, exactly. Welcome. The machine. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Welcome. I went to a Pink, I went to a Pink Floyd exhibit yesterday that they're having in Montreal. That was brilliant. But wow. But, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was great. But um, let me ask you the, the crazy thing about this band and, and and being someone who's played music before. And I know you can relate to this. What I always liked about Godsmack was they were that success story that did it on their own. You know, the, that whole story about how Sully did the record played almost everything on it, funded it himself, and then the record blew up and he owned most of it. Like just that whole story was one of those ones that you don't hear very often. It's usually the other way where it's the band that just gets screwed completely. And then you get a band that starts out of the gate with this kind of success and this kind of like, hey, we've got a bit of decision-making power now because we're not a slave to the machine. And it seems like that's kind of always been where this band has found its focus and it's found its launching was from that. It's born out of something where he was able to do what he wanted to do because he had control. And it's just such an enviable position to be in as a musician. Yeah. Success is control uh, in this business. Yeah. And that's what it is, man. You know, uh, in a nutshell, yeah. And that's why I always try and tell people that in this business, as you know, you know, luck is as is, is important as talent, man. Yeah. Luck and timing. You know, some of the greatest records, bro, never got hurt, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, I we are blessed. And But plus, Sully is indeed, I call him my genius. You know, that yeah. dude's a genius. It's true. You know what I mean? And, and he doesn't, he, he's just, he's just like that. And he's very driven and, and his ideas are great. And he writes fantastic songs and he did nothing but get better over the yeah. years, you know, better and better. And of course, we're not heavy metal anymore. And we, you know, we, we changed, well, shit, 20 years have passed, you know what I mean? And so I think our evolution, particularly with, with the new song Surrender, you know, it, it has what we feel is a new or sound that we got, that we he he directed us on the last record five years ago, uh, but it also he sings way better. Yeah, from doing solo albums and learning how to play piano, he actually, you know, that first record, Robbie famously said he walked into the studio, saw so he was singing. He's like, "What? You're gonna sing?" Because he we all knew him as a drummer. As a drummer, you know of course. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Sully's so like, "Yeah, I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna try. Just you know, bear with me." And he started singing. And Robbie said, "I've walked out, sound like a cat being in a bag being thrown down the stairs or something," you know. And then he say, "You know, he, Robbie's like, I came back, you know, whenever a few hours later, and it was already starting to dial in." He has a very you know distinct, unique voice. That's it's recognizable, and that that's another plus, you know. And and again, another lucky thing for the band. Because you know how it is, you know how it goes, you know. If you can uh, hear a voice and go, "Oh, that's Godsmack," well, that's a yeah. great thing. Oh, man. I mean, he's his voice is dis his voice is distinctive, and his voice is it's 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 the trademark, and it, and it's something that it's developed into something where it's like, no man, people come for that. 
you know. Um, so the new album, uh, Lighting Up the Sky, coming out uh, in February. Surrender is the first single that we've heard. Uh, in terms of preparing for this record and and the writing process and and the recording, were you guys was this the kind of thing that was done over? I hate, I don't even like bringing it up anymore. But was it done over the pandemic, or was it the kind of thing that once the pandemic kind of started to wane away um, and and calm down, did you guys get in and start working? Yeah, well, we at, when the pandemic hit, we had like another six seven months of shows booked. We were on our fourth single, which you know. Usually we only get three singles, but we had three singles all go number one. So right. in America here. Yeah. And so we you put a fourth single out like we don't, you know, again, we're like, OK, fourth single. Wow. And then and then we go to Europe. And when we came back from Europe, it was like, I don't know, February or whatever. And then and, and our new single went number one. And we're like, oh, my God, four in a row. I mean, we never even had two on one record. We've had number one singles on every record I'll admit, but never two and three. And but. so the, the fourth one happened. And uh, so we booked a bunch of, bunch of more shows. We had shows with Metallica, all this stuff. Yeah. We were all excited. And then boom. Yeah. <laughs> the world changed and, you know, and then we were like, what? So we, we, we looked at it as an advantage, you know, well, shit, let's just continue. Let's carry on. You know what I mean? And and pretend like we ended the, the cycle. And so, you know, we'll take a year off because we always did that. By the way, that's another genius. My genius guy thought of every four years we put a record out. Every since I joined baseless four years later, four, four years, four years. And, the, and with the thought being one year to write and record, which is plenty of time. And then two years to tour our ass off cycle tour and support sell. Yeah. And then a year to just piss off and not be in each other's grill. Just go home. Sure. Uh, reintroduce yourself to your pillow and your or your family and your turtles and the things you love, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, so we looked at it like, OK, perfect. We'll just take a year off. By the time this year goes through 2020, it'll all be over and we'll start normal. Back. And as you know, it wasn't. And so. But, but in tw so 2021, the, the, the plan was take the rest of the year of 2020 off. It's like February at that point, maybe March, yeah. that everything wonky and got canceled. And so we took the rest of that year off and we said, we'll get together January 2021, and which we did. And then we worked for three months. We wrote like, I think, 12, 13, 14 songs. There's a bunch of, of positive stuff happening. And then and then all of a sudden, yeah some negative stuff happen in personal lives. And, and basically, you know, I guess it's no secret, but Sully, you know, had a breakup with a long-term girl and right. he was like, I need some time off, man, have a nice summer. So he took that summer off. Well, by the time it was a great thing. And these things happened to us again, luck people, you know? And so, he goes away for four, three, four months and, and we don't, you know, it just, everything kind of stopped. And then he comes back, man. And we had thrown away only three of the songs that we wrote together for those first three months of 21 ended up on this record. Nice. After, you know, after he got, <laughs> got the slap or whatever you want to call these things, <laughs> boy, he came back with a vengeance with all these yeah. <laughs> ripping rad songs. And, you know, and I tell people that, you know, it's like, I love the guy. And, and so I hate to see him get his heart broke. And, but yeah. every time it happened, <laughs> right, great and songs. Robbie, yeah. And me and me, you know, me and Tony Robbie are like, man, I feel so bad for Sully, but <laughs> We're going to get some hits out of this one, baby. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. I mean, that's anyone that's ever written music knows it's, it's, it's therapy for, for things that go wrong in your life. It's, 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 it's the ultimate tool to, to, you know, to tell someone, fuck you. It's the ultimate tool to, to, to document whatever's happened in your life. It's, it's a beautiful privilege to be able to make music and you can timestamp stuff. Like, you know, I remember writing songs and I listen to them now and, and it, it brings me exactly right back to where I was when I wrote that song. And, and it's a beautiful thing to be able to do. So as artists, you know, we're privileged to be able to do that, but um, I just find it funny how he, he scraps most of the stuff and then comes back with, with new stuff. That's just, that's ripping. Yeah. And, and it was, it was a vibe, man. 
And so the second run, when he came back in 21, <clears throat> that's when like the shit was magic and the magic went down in the studio. It was just, it had never been like this. We got Mud Rock back who I was stoked because I wasn't on the first two records and he did right. those, you know? Yeah. So we got, and, and you know, already deciding it's our final run or I'm uh, not a run final record uh to get mud rock back and give me the opportunity to work with them you know he's like a legend to me you know in the godsmack sure. thing yeah. and all and uh and then get fortman to mix it again it was just everything it was magic dude and it was so easy and there was no tension like this that always rears its ugly head in a yeah. studio you know when everything is on the line there's pressure Mm -hmm. And, you know, your part, red light and all that shit. And there was none of that shit, man. It was just so organic and natural. And we were, we smoked some pot, you know, we don't drink and party and get effed up anymore. You know, now we just smoke a little pot and then everything, everything was meant to be, man. And it yeah. was all, it was all, like I said, I can't help but call him a genius in, in all my interviews because it's really genius what he's done with this band over the last 25 years, man. And, you know, to for anybody go, oh, you're bumming out about us. Well, again, we're not breaking up. We'll be back out there. This last record, I don't care if you if you love the heavier metal band of Godsmack and the Faceless, or if you like the more, you know, I guess, commercially radio sounding rock of the last record, which was a, an evolution of seven albums to get there, you know, of course you're going to like this new one. It's got a little bit of every era. I like told somebody, I was like, dude, it's like you wrote a love letter to, to the to band's your, career, yeah, to your career. Yeah. Totally makes sense. It totally makes sense. Yeah, that's what the record's like. So I think it'll really, it's going to, it's going to, all our fans, especially are going to be stoked on this one, man. Cause we are. And yeah. you know, like Robbie was saying, you know, every record, there's usually one or two songs that you're like, yeah, you know, that's cool, be cut or whatever, where we just, this one, man, and everyone has a story, every single song, and so much shit went down that I can't even say in public because it's so, <laughs> it, no, because it's not because it's bad or crazy shit. I'm talking private shit. Yes, yeah, of course, of course. After 20 years of living with dudes, you know, like, you know, shit goes down and it's like, and, and, you know, we all really, you know, bonded in ways that we never had before on this record, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, we're going to we'll continue to rock uh, for a while, you know, but but without the stigma or the, you know, the pressure and uh, just everything that goes along with being us on a label and putting records, putting music out. We're going to try and just enjoy this this newfound love of 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 our brand and our, our our humanity as as musicians you know and with yeah and, and i heard you say it earlier the f word so i'll say it it's nice <laughs> to just not give a fuck, fuck. Yeah. you know yeah i, I mean, hear you and just be able to go and play music again without having to sell something you know what i mean it's it's <laughs> nice you know I totally hear it. Um, Shannon, thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Um, I, I'd love to chat with you again when the record comes out. And and thank you for just being that drummer, you know, being that drummer that everyone can kind of, you know, use as a North Star to say, man, that's the guy who who you want to play like. Because you you are that guy. I mean, you are that drummer. And uh, and and you're also a great human. So so thanks for taking the time. And congrats on uh, on the success of Godsmack. And, and I'm glad you found your home where you're being appreciated and you're given good conditions and and people appreciate you because you should be you're a treasure well thank you man thank you for those kind words jason i appreciate you and slaves on dope forever baby elon <laughs> rachel forever amen and, forever uh, <laughs> yeah amen casey chaos casey chaos forever baby all right man all right buddy i'll talk to you soon man thanks jason see thanks. you soon so i had no idea that the first godsmack album was just done by by the singer like i yeah i had no idea yeah I, he, so he he basically wow. self-produced the record self-financed the record played everything on the record i'm not like i'm 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 paraphrasing here or i'm quoting yeah. out of my ass but from what i remember the record costs like maybe 10 grand 
maybe eight grand. It was something ridiculous. And like it generated really, how much? <laughs> dude, the, the yeah. record went four or five times platinum, I think. The, the, the album was so big. You know, that first Godsmack album. And I love those stories. It's kind of like the paranormal activity story. You know, um, they do that movie for nothing and it just becomes the biggest thing, starts a franchise and, and that record started Godsmack's career. And it just goes to show sometimes procrastination is the death of art because, you know, go, uh, go to band practice kids, of course. But at the same time, it's, uh, you got everybody telling him, ah, he can't sing. Like here he is going to the studio, taking it upon himself, writing this entire record. And, and Shannon's such a good storyteller. T- yeah. telling about it like i love hearing about this just from a dude sounding like he's telling stories in a coffee shop or yeah a bar or something like, i like that a lot I, this is my favorite way to hear information because sometimes when you're in a professional setting sometimes it's like and then in 1976 <laughs> that's how kiss does stuff every yeah. time gene simmons does anything you can tell he pre-wrote it yeah and it's yeah. <laughs> it's like, everything's very carefully scripted yeah 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 because it doesn't want to say anything that's in, inaccurate and good on him for that but at the same time I like hearing stories from a story perspective when everyone's sitting around laughing and that's my favorite way to hear information so oh 100% 100% um, but yeah it was a real treat to have him on the podcast and uh, and it was a great way to kick off the new year so um, I want to thank everybody for listening thank you Ryan um, we're going to be we're going to be doing some fun stuff in uh, 2023 we've got a lot of fun stuff planned um, and next week on the show, we have a, a very, very interesting gentleman who uh, still lives in his mom's basement. <laughs> I don't want to say anything else. I'm not giving anything else away, but let's just say he still lives in his mom's basement. When it comes to musicians, uh, <laughs> that's a pretty broad clue. <laughs> um, I want to thank uh, everyone for, uh, for for being a part of the podcast. Of course, thank you uh, and welcome aboard to AKG, uh, making us sound so great. So we really, really appreciate it all the, all the gear and the headphones and everything. And uh, we're really looking forward to uh, stepping up our game. Thank you, AKG. Uh, we want to thank Heartbeat Hot Sauce, our <laughs> main sponsor for the podcast. And I love that, the heartbeat of the Rockman Power Hour. I think that's going to be a catchphrase. That's um, good. I'm holding up the uh, score. Well, game. you're a professional radio announcer. Say it, say it in your radio way. We'd like to thank Heartbeat Hot Sauce, the heartbeat of the Rockman Power Hour. <laughs> you can check them out. And if you use our promo code right below Rockman 20, that'll get you 20% off your entire order. And uh, thank you to Studio House Designs, always look, making us look fresh. Uh, they do drops almost monthly, so you can uh, find their stuff over at studiohousedesigns.com. And uh, until next week, we will see all of you and hear all of you. And please, please, please like, subscribe. If you enjoy the podcast, leave us comments. Let us know who you'd like us to talk to, subjects you'd like us to cover, anything. We really, really appreciate it. And tell your friends to subscribe. That helps us keep the lights on and it helps us. Um, I don't know. What does it help us do? Who knows? I don't know. We well, it makes it, it, it tells studio house designs. Hey, maybe just print out a Casper shirt for Ryan anyway. Cause like, you know, <laughs> he may or may not shed tears on a plane over this. Oh, you're <laughs> such a baby. We'll see you next week. On the I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. You're so not. I don't know.